come to the table and worship the Savior. Taste what forgiveness is Hello, for. Hello, everyone. As we begin this new year, 2021, I wanted to share a few words of encouragement with you. There's no doubt that we are living in some different times right now. And there is no doubt that 2020 will go down in the record books with unforgettable events, good and bad, of course. Even for our Waterview family, 2020 was very trying, especially with the addition of this unforgettable pandemic. If we let it, 2020 could really cause us to struggle in our faith and become very negative. But I'd like to encourage us to focus on the positive events that did happen this year. And those were like spending more time with our families, finding new and exciting ways to connect with our Waterview families, and finding different ways to study God's Word together. More importantly for us as Christians, we have a faith that most of the world doesn't, and that faith is in God. No matter what is going on in the world or around us, we have a faith that God is in control. So as we begin this new year, just remember the one that is always constant, never wavers in the love he has for us. I believe 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3-9 through 9, gives us the right perspective to start this new year. And it reads, starting with chapter or, uh, verse 3, Praise be to the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief of all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though it's refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an unexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your soul. So let us this year focus on being more in step with God and delivering the gospel to everyone we meet. From the elders here, we wish everyone a safe and blessed new year. Thank you. Hello, Waterview family. On behalf of the elders, I'm very happy to have the opportunity to give you one more lesson as we wrap up the year. You know, this is the time of the year that we normally reflect back and then we look forward to the next year. And we think about the things that have happened in our lives and we contemplate the future. We may set our personal or professional or spiritual goals for the coming year and we look forward to what is ahead, to what maybe the possibilities are and the changes we can have and make in our lives. But as we finish up this holiday season and we reflect back on 2020, we probably look back and say, good riddance. We've experienced how quickly our lives changed in a blink of an eye. And this virus has impacted us all in this country and around the world. Our everyday lives we've had changed, have changed and have kept, change, kept change, changing. We had to cancel our meetings uh, for worship, our Bible classes. We saw hospitals would not allow uh, family members or friends in to visit our loved ones and the assisted living and nursing homes went on lockdown and some of our elderly who had been suffering already began suffering even more they grew more confused and sadder as the days went on many people were infected with COVID-19 
and some of them couldn't fight it and succumb to this horrible disease. And then watching the news, sometimes we became overwhelmed. And then I kept asking the question, can it get any worse? And then every day we saw how this virus impacted the world and the sick and the dying, no cure, no vaccine. How are we going to survive? And then also in the midst of this, we saw riots, destruction, police being targeted, lawlessness in the streets, and no apparent end to this outrageous activity. We also saw politicians fighting each other, not seeming to care about our country, just their own political future. With a year like this, it's very easy to see the troubles and the hardships as we deal with the issues that interrupted our lives. Times like these, we reflect more on the negative and the things that went wrong. But as Christians, our perspective should be to reflect on God and on how his providential hand was involved in 2020. How can anything good come out of this year, we might ask? We may not know the answer to this for many, many years to come. And we try to understand this. So for us to try to understand this, we need to look to the scriptures. There are so many examples how God had certain events turn out. This was to let his children know there was a purpose he had and that he was in control. One such example is in Genesis chapter 37 through 50. We see the events of Joseph and his brothers. A lot of us know about these events. His brothers were jealous of him and he wanted to, they wanted to kill him, but then they sold him into slavery into Egypt. He was uh, bought by an officer of Pharaoh who was Potiphar, who found favor with Joseph and put him in charge of his household. Then we saw Potiphar's wife make advances, but Joseph rejected her. So she lied to Potiphar about him and he was put in prison. But we see him in prison that he had an opportunity to interpret for, uh, for Pharaoh for his dreams, to, to uh, interpret the dream of the seven years of plenty and the seven years of famine. We saw Joseph rise to power with Pharaoh with all these negative things that happened to him. Who wouldn't blame him for being so negative? But then we see in Genesis 45, verses 3 through 8, how he responded to the events when he, was, when he confronts his brothers who have come to Egypt to buy grain. And I want to read that right now. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. And they came near, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has come in the land these two years, and there is yet five years in which there, there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me <clears throat> before you to preserve you, for you, a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and the Lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. <clears throat> Throughout the account that we see in Genesis <clears throat> of Joseph, we saw that he had very difficult times. But in everything that occurred in, to him in the scriptures, it said the Lord was with him. And we see now how Joseph survived these things, and he was better in every event that seemed to go bad for him. Joseph could have given up. He could have lost faith in God. His family was against him. 
His master was against him and even imprisoned him on a lie. But in every circumstance, Joseph's faith in the Lord was certain and God found favor with him. Joseph knew God had a plan for him regardless of the circumstances he found himself in. This, as you know, is very difficult to do and to be have an attitude as Joseph had. But as Christians, regardless of our outcome physically, we need to understand that God has our best interests at heart and he will do the same for us as he did for Joseph. This is so hard to believe, but we need to keep the faith. We need to continue in prayer and we need to trust the Lord. He will never fail us. As I close my lesson tonight, <clears throat> I would like to challenge each of us as we reflect on 2020 to think about where you have seen God at work in your life and in your family, at Waterview, in the world. When I'm reflecting back, I'm thankful we were able to use the technology that we have to continue to worship together, even when we could not be physically together. We were able to experience the joy of coming back together to worship in person and then helping us see that God knew we needed to meet together. Many families were able to spend more time together because we were all at home. Our children have seen how we can still be a church family even when we are not together. And we witnessed love in action even in a terrible hard time in our lives. There has been so much suffering this year. There have been many that suffered from this virus and others and other illnesses. We've seen the loss of loved ones. We have lost dear brothers and sisters in Christ to this virus, to cancer, to age. But no matter how dark it seems, the Lord is our light and he will help us through it. The God of scripture is the same today as he was then. We just need to continue to trust him and believe in him. As I close, I'd like us to go to our Father in prayer. Our gracious Father in heaven, over the past year, we've seen our lives change in so many ways. This virus has impacted all of us, and we've seen unrest in our communities. Some may be feeling overwhelmed or worried. Fear may be overtaking our lives. And there is a sense of hopelessness. Father, we know you are truly the God of comfort. And we pray that all may be comforted in the knowledge that you are in control and your faithfulness is certain. In this coming year, with, be with us, Lord, as we continue to run our Christian race, that we may run with patience and endurance. May we use our lives in service to you and for the benefit of others. And help us have open hearts and minds to your will, Father, that we may walk in peace with you. Let us be grateful for life and the years you have given us upon this earth. Thank you for your son, Jesus, for the sacrifice and for the life he lived. And help us to be more like him every day and save us in the end. And it is in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. And may God continue to bless you and everyone in your family for this coming year. Come to the table and worship the Savior. Taste what forgiveness is for. His mercy will lead us. The grace of God feed us, making us hungry for more.